Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of the Lakes. Our celebrant today is our pastor, Father Jerry Harris. We now begin the liturgy for the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is number 552, Glory and Praise to Our God. Welcome especially to our guests that have gathered with us here at Our Lady of the Lakes. We're really honored that you could be with us. So we begin as always in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. May the peace and grace and love of God be with you all. As we gather, let's remind ourselves that God, Jesus, always seeks the lost. You seek the lost, Lord have mercy. You forgive the sinner, Christ have mercy. Your love for us is unending, Lord have mercy. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let's praise God with the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, In the glory. 
us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all the things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's hear our scripture. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned away aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molted calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone with them, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them then I'll make you a great nation. But Moses implored to the Lord, his God saying, why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought, brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so, so strong of a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self saying, I'll make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised. I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in punishment of the people. He had threatened to inflict on his people the word of the Lord. of your compassion wipe out my offense thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me I will rise and go to mother a clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will rise and go to my Father. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. I will rise and go to my Father.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display in all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable What man among you, having a hundred sheep, And losing one of them will not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. And I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, will not light a lamp, sweep the house, searching diligently, carefully, until she finds it? And when she does find it, She calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, Man had two sons. The younger son said to the father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, 
a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat. But here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up, go to my father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up, went back to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again, was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son, who had been out in the field and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing and called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. Your servant, he said to them, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and refused to enter into the house. His father came out, pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, look, all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, Son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel today is all about lost items, a sheep, a coin, and a lost son. In each case, when it was found, there was rejoicing. So what would that look like in our modern day. Jacob Wetterling disappeared on October 22, 1989 at the age of 11 years old. In 2016, Jacob Wetterling's remains were found 27 years after being missing. The family heard in court proceedings that he had actually died the night of his disappearance. What is important is what Patty Wetterling, Jacob's mother, said in a statement over what they learned about his fate. She said this, we always believed he was alive and would come home. We kept the front porch light on so he could find his way home. We never, uh, we never changed our phone number because he just might call. We never gave up hope that he would someday be home. We never stopped looking for Jacob. Sadly, it didn't turn out the way they want him, wanted, but they did bring him home and they had a funeral. And what happened is, is that during this whole process, the family showed grace and dignity. And they authored what was called 11 Jacobs. Now, Number 11 was his number on, on the soccer team he played. And they thought these were qualities that Jacob had 
and they wanted people to, to hear about them and also live them. So here they are. Be fair, be kind, be understanding, be honest, be thankful, be a good sport, be a good friend, be joyful, be generous, be gentle with others, be positive. For what the weatherlings have shown us and for what they have meant to us, we owe them this, as was said in a news article. And so what happened is, as the games kind of regained that day, they encouraged everybody to wear some number 11, someplace on whatever uniform or if you're attending, as a sign of honoring Jacob's life. See, what happened is, is that they got it right. They knew what it was like to lose somebody, but they also knew that when he was found, that they would rejoice and make the best of it. Now we turn to the gospel. What happened is, is that the first thing we have are one of these three gospel parables is a woman that is looking for a lost coin. The fact that a woman was mentioned in the parables is, is, is incredible. Women had no power or authority. And so what happened is, is he says a woman who had 10 coins loses one. And then what she does is she lights a light and sweeps the floor. People didn't have wooden floors or whatever floors. It was usually dust. If you drop something, what would happen is it could easily get lost. So she lit the lamp and started sweeping because the light would reveal the value of the coin. In a deeper level, what happens is, is that when we sweep the floor, it reminds us of dust. Dust, in the second book of Genesis, reminds us that we're all created from dust and to dust shall return. It also reminds us dust can represent all those things that keep us from God. It can be sin, distraction, whatever it is. And what happened is, is that uh, when we eliminate the dust, we find out how valuable we really are in God's presence. The man that lost the sheep, 99 of them were okay. One was lost. As the business, you might say, well, I could just write that off. I could take it off my taxes. Not for this shepherd. What he does, he seeks the lost. And what happens is he finds it. And what does he do? Puts the sheep on his shoulders. Great biblical symbolism there. The shepherd itself, what represents Jesus. The sheep represents us. The whole scene is Jesus enters into this world and carries the burden of our sin the fact that we are lost. Then we have the last parable, that of the prodigal son. We've heard that uh, for years. Prodigal means reckless. And really, it's not so much the prodigal reckless son, it's the prodigal reckless father. He's reckless for his son to return. You heard what happened. Before the son could even get his well-rehearsed lines out that I'm sorry, the father was kissing him and embracing him, which was a sign of reconciliation. The community had the right to stone him for what he did towards his father, but his father would not have them. In Luke's chapter, uh, gospel, uh, this part of the gospel, Luke chapter 15, it is the three parables, the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the lost uh, son. This chapter is known as God's lost and found department. The point is, God doesn't lose anyone. He goes after the lost. Think about it. If you're lost, it means you're in the wrong place. And to be found, you put it back into the right place. 
In Jesus' promises in the Gospel of John, I have not lost any of those you gave me. Point for us today is this. God never stops looking for us, even in the midst of tragedy. We must trust in the love of God that is never ending. You may feel you've done something so horrible, you're so defective, that how could God ever love me? Well, that's the point. Of a father's love, God loves us no matter what. And when we can finally give that up, that bad self-talk, and just put ourselves in God's hands, we will be found, and we will know our worth in the Lord. Everybody in this church is worthy of God's love. Amen. Well, let's rise. God loves each of us as an only child. As we profess our creed, this is what we believe. If we're in the wrong place, we're lost, let's get in the right place. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Father. Through him all things were made for us, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. And for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God's always looking out for us, looking for us, let us present to the Lord our needs. For our guests, our common response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may God guide and strengthen her efforts to spread the gospel. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and terrorism in the world, for healing within America, may God's peace prevail in hearts everywhere. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are grieving the death of a loved one, may God's Holy Spirit bring them comfort. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For we who worship and share community here, may the Holy Spirit kindle excuse me, continue to enkindle us the fire of his love, we pray. Lord, hear us. For God's blessing on all students, school teachers, administrators, and staff returning to school, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the paying off the debt of the church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Walter Winkie, remembered at this mass, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs within our hearts, for, for those listed on the sick list in our parish bulletin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have heard the needs of your people. Please grant what we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated as our tithes are gathered and the altar is prepared. Our offertory hymn is number 467, The Lord is My Hope.
Pray that our gifts of bread and wine, our tithes and offerings be acceptable to God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of our O Lord, look with favor on our offerings, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve for the salvation of all. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just our duty, salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Oh. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, you remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all baptized believers. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her holy spouse, Saint Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We rise to join our voices and pray for the kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin safe from all useless anxiety as we wait with great hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please greet each other with some sign of Christ's peace. You want to take Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. On us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 349, The Supper of the Lord. Precious body, precious blood, 
seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast Just a couple of announcements this morning. Our Lady of the Lakes are looking for some catechists for this formation year. You can see or contact Joe at the church office or myself after mass. Joe, raise your hand, wave. She read this morning too with her husband. So um, that would be great. Catholic services appeal still going on. Again, if you can help, we'd really appreciate that. The Council of Catholic Women annual pie sale will be held Friday, September 16th. That's coming up this Friday at the Balsam Lake Farmer's Market from 3 to 5, and if available, after weekend masses next weekend. Hint, Balsam Lake Farmer's Market is here. 
our Lady of the Lakes out in the parking lot. So um, they have some really good stuff out there too. Also, uh, uh, one of the, our visitors, the, well, many of you that come up for lake home stuff and are closing up and going other places for the winter, uh, she said, well, did you ever think about announcing having people, if you got food at the house, canned goods, dry goods, that you want to, don't have a place for them just to bring them to church? And I thought, well, that's a great idea. So you can bring them and just drop them off here at church. And also, if you got frozen food, we have a huge freezer, and we'd be glad to take that. Uh, we're actually, uh, the need for food in the area is really getting serious, so um, if you can help out, that would be great. And again, welcome to our guests. Uh, a lot of you are cabin people, and we really like having you here, but we know you've got to get back to where life's taking you. But if you are here, look, here looking for a church home, please consider joining Our Lady of the Lakes. You know, we often say we're not perfect, but we truly try to live the gospel as best we can. So have a blessed week, and now let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not only our desires may always prevail in us. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to do God's work. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn is number 388, City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep. People in darkness have seen a great light. conquered the night. Let us fill the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing for the Lord our light and our love has turned the night into day. sons of the morning we are daughters of day the one who has loved us has brightened our way the Lord of all kindness has called us to be Set their hearts free. Let us fill the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing.